From what we know of Sacagawea's life is that she was a younger Shoshone Indian woman. She was kidnapped as a child, married to the French fur trapper Toussaint Charbonneau, as well as pregnant. Soon to be mother of Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau when they met Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. Yet lo and behold, that Lewis and Clark's documentation of her is the documentation of her living existence. Nothing before this shows when she was born or what brought her to Fort Mandan or even after the journey, it is still unclear what happened with her life. All we ever know about her is in the Lewis and Clark journals. Lewis and Clark first met Sacagawea at Fort Mandan, where the Corps of Discovery encountered their first winner of their journey. This is where William Clark grew fond of her and her child. They knew that having her and her husband would help with must needed translations along the journey. Yet it wasn't until October 19th of 1805 that Clark understood that by having her, she stood as a compromise to them being a war party, allowing for less conflict along the way. Clark said, Confirm those people of our friendly intentions, as no woman ever accompanies a war party of Indians in this quarter. This is when he fully understood that she meant more to this party than she originally did. One of the first big tests of their journey was when Lewis and three of his men came across Chief Camelweight and his band of Shoshone Indians. Knowing it would be a difficult task, Lewis thought that he should take Chief Camelot and his men to the rest of the Corps of Discovery. It is here where Sacagawea, who recognized Camelot as her brother, creating an emotional reunion, the Corps was gifted horses needed in the days to follow. Without Sacagawea's presence, it is possible that the Corps may have entered in conflict with the Shoshones. Documenting Sacagawea and her son was done more so by Clark than Lewis. Upon reaching the Pacific Ocean, two significant events often go overlooked, one being that a military journey of the United States Army allowed an Indian woman to vote on where they should set up camp, not knowing that more than a hundred years later that women and only some American Indians could vote. While it wasn't until 1957, that all American Indians could vote. The second being that when Sacagawea argues with Clark that she didn't come all this way to not see the great waters and the great fish washed up on the shore. This here is an event in which you have a woman who's also a native woman speaking out against a white man who was a ranked military officer, yet he still allows for her to come to the ocean and see the whale rather than reprimanding her for it. This here, you can argue that Clark understood that she ultimately meant more to this journey, and he wasn't going to be the one that's going to compromise it. One of the last experiences we have with Sacagawea in which she seemed to save and prove noble enough to the journey is her finding the Bozeman Pass. Knowing the trails as a child, she knew the Yellowstone River would be a service to them taking the Corps back to the Missouri River. Upon finding this, Clark mentions her being of value to them on this journey, giving her praise, knowing that without her, the conflict would definitely have risen. Upon returning home to St. Louis, Clark keeps in contact with Sacagawea for about six years. He even offers to take John to raise and educate him in order to live a life of scholar and excellence. This, however, is our ending with Sacagawea. No documented history of her exists after this point, yet, her story continues. Only about 11 works of the Lewis and Clark journey were written in 100 years following the journey. All were written from the male perspective until an author by the name of Eva Emery Dye, who was a member of the women's suffrage movement. Dye helped enshrine Sacagawea to become a legend of the Corps of Discovery, making her an Indian princess rather than a squaw or Indian woman as the Lewis and Clark journals depicted her. Essentially, she made Sacagawea a heroine rather than a hero of male narrative. She used phrases such as, Princess, come home now to her mountain kingdom, while telling stories of her leading these men across the uncharted west with a baby on her back, allowing Sacagawea to become a female icon for expansionism as well as women's suffrage. In 1905, the Federated Women's Clubs of North Dakota initiated a campaign to erect a monument to honor Sacagawea on October 13, 1810, in front of 5,000 people, the statue of the Bird Woman was unveiled. A moment which linked women and Native Americans to Sacagawea, a true heroine 
in the quest for manifest destiny. Compromises like this helped ease the conflict of women's suffrage movement by showing a woman like Sacagawea, too, could lead a group of men on a man's journey. Over the next seven decades, over 200 titles came to press showing that this woman played more of a role in the core of discovery than noted before. In the 1940s, Sacagawea again rose to be a focal point, especially within the feminist community, in which her sexuality was brought to life in the novels being written about her in this journey, in which she gallantly fell in love with her Captain Clark. Yet this concept was perceived differently by male and female writers alike. In the male writing community, she was still treated as an object and the focus of her was to dedicate herself to her captains along the way. One of these writers in particular was Donald Colrus Petey, in which he took Sacagawea into a role in which she was not a common squaw. She instead was a beautiful woman, even beautiful by white standards at the time, who served her country, the United States of America. He rejected the fact that Sacagawea did this for manifest destiny, but rather for love of her man and country. To think that during this time, World War II was going on and the men were off to war while the women were at home servicing them. This built a correlation that was very understandable for the men at this time who could relate. While women of this time may have agreed that love was driving Sacagawea, but it alone could not inspire her. A female author during this time by the name of Della Good Emmons brought to life the Indian princess who came from a noble family. Portraying Sacagawea as a powerful individual capable of love and beauty. Sacagawea was depicted as a beautiful woman with a luminous face despite the way people looked and thought of natives at this time. Emmons brings up the countless times Sacagawea saved the men on the journey and guided Clark through the treacherous Bozeman Pass. At the end, she and Lewis proclaiming, We must not forget that our success was due largely to Sacagawea. I pray God that we will always remember. Making sure that men and women alike during this time period would understand that the men's efforts in World War II would not have been possible without the women who helped them. Despite the differences that Emmons and Petit showcased, they both explored the possibility of native acculturation and assimilation, as well as the goals widely discussed in America during this time period. The legend of Sacagawea continued through the 1970s and 80s as her role changed slightly to represent her race. While most work was justified by how Western conquest upheld them by fearication and savagery in civilization, as well as the legend of Sacagawea didn't stray too far away from her love Clark. In 1989, her image was a great woman who accomplished great things for the United States. Colors of red, white, and blue dominate the image associating her to the nation showcasing that Sacagawea fulfilled her obligations as a protective mother and as an American heroine of the Lewis and Clark expedition. One writer, Anna Lee Waldo, wrote a romance novel of Sacagawea. It received many negative reviews despite the love from the American audience. Waldo's novel offered that this woman could never participate in civilization because of her native heritage. Yet she brought into play the actions of her relations with Clark could never be real due to taboos against interracial marriages, something that no other authors bring to mind when talking about the core of discovery. Waldo creates an American heroine that women of early feminist movements could relate to because like Sacagawea, they too could rise above the constraints of their time. Saying that they too will not be manipulated by men just the same as Sacagawea was not man manipulated by Lewis and Clark. Yet today, she still remains as a forefront to the true American heroine with her latest installment on the gold dollar coin in 2000, suggesting now it is okay for the United States to give proper honor to women. The truth, however, is that through conflict of time, she has offered a compromise to women and natives alike, allowing them to be welcomed into our society the way it should be. As we approach the next obstacles in life, we will be reminded what Sacagawea has done for women and American Indians. Through movements such as the Me Too movement, she has been seen as an innovator and leader. Creating movements for great things such as Harriet Tubman feature on the $20 bill, as well as women's equality. The fight is not over for us, but we are thankful that Lewis and Clark included her in the journals because without her, where would we be?